This is your weekend market review for Saturday, December 31st, 2022. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max at eXp Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is your weekend market recap for the New Year's, Saturday, December 31, 2022. Hopefully you had a great week. Hopefully you're having a great week, having a better year. Looking forward to 2023. Been pretty great trading year for us and everybody involved. Want to thank everybody for the generous donations, love, support. Let's keep it going. 2023, keep it going. One of the things I want to start off with was some of the things that I want to reflect about on this year and some of what's going on currently. I still think we're going to have a volatile year. I'm still expecting at some point... <clears throat> The market to probably take another dive down as I would say the market gets more comfortable with the recession, but then also starts to realize that higher rates probably are not going to be sustainable for, you know, for a certain period of time. Let's way to describe it, because the market at this point is hoping that the feds are going to be cutting rates and going back to lower rates. I personally think the new rate era is going to be like it always has been in the somewhere in the five to seven range. <clears throat> but that being said, I think there's some other underlying issues like the amount of debt people have, the amount of credit cards that, you know, debt people are taking on. Just overall, the market going from gluttonous with stimulus to probably going to what we would consider lean for, is it months, years? I don't know. However, there's going to be certain underlying things that are going to sustain. I think housing is going to be stable because we don't have the 2008-2009 debt bubbles where people were putting 0% down and borrowing endlessly. If you had a pulse, now people put 20% down. People have low interest rates locked in. They're not going anywhere. Housing is going to be undersupplied because, again, you're not building enough. I think there's going to be still issues in the commodity markets as that we're underinvested. So I think that's going to be an issue. And then Last but not least, I think the feds are going to be in this pickle position where <clears throat> inflation might be coming down, but it is entrenched. And it's how far do they want to raise rates? That becomes the biggest question, you know, 2023. So I expect volatility. I'm not expecting the market to rip maybe up until, and when I say rip up, maybe have the ability to bottom and then go higher until maybe second, third quarter, 2023. It's going to be choppy and sloppy and so one of the things I want to focus on and I put in my notes to be better about if I'm going to be trading options <clears throat> I need to be better about taking profits on options and if I really want to hold some just leave one or two calls or puts versus trying to score bigger hits potentially now this is the thing with the markets if they're going to be more choppy is that you're not going to have as much follow through so it's harder to play swings for example, if you think that the market's going to be in a 10 to 15 percent range, right? However, the one thing that we do need to be very cognizant of, and if you're in the Discord room, please pay attention to this, listen to this, remind me, remind yourself, be on top of this. The key to 2023 is going to be to find the leaders. As the market narrows in its strength, because the market is actually slightly weak to not I say vulnerable, but just it does not going to have momentum. What's going to happen is the leadership is going to narrow. <clears throat> and that's the goal is to find what is leading. Will it be apparent right now? Um, I'm starting to see some potential signs for it. Again, I'm looking at gold in 2023. You know, don't have any positions right now. Obviously, been telling people to buy physical for what seems like forever. And at this point, <clears throat> that's what I'd be thinking about is like, what's going to be the next leadership? I have ideas, industrials, commodities, precious metals, certain, <clears throat> I don't know, specialty chemical companies, miners, oil service, even some of the, the housing stocks, because I imagine they're going to be able to, with shortages, especially when you come into the middle of the year when people need to start moving and buying it's probably going to be a shortage, so housing prices are going to go up because the costs are going to go up. Some of the banks with higher interest rates might do well if they're leveraging their debt correctly and not, you know, not doing subprime mortgages and all sorts of exotic junk. 
we'll get into it. But anyway, I appreciate everybody. Just think about that. What is what are the leaders? Take notes. Like like let's start looking at leaders because there's certain st- leaders like Caterpillar breaking the 52 week highs. You know, certain Boeing holding up pretty well. Certain materials names look okay. Again, there will be a theme though, and I think people are not going to like it. Tech is going to go nowhere. It's going to be in a choppy, sloppy, messy range for some period of time. <clears throat> again, especially the old mega tech. The mega and now again, there might be new tech companies that are coming. If you find those and you think they have what it takes, that's different than the old legacy mega tech. So that's the big New Year rant that I think people need to focus on. Again, if check out Twitter, always posting there. If you want to join the Discord room. Hit me up. I like to talk to people and see what their story is. Again, this room is meant for the people who want to work the hardest. You don't have to be the best trader. Just people who are looking to work and study, who need just a little bit of guidance. That's all. Share knowledge. They want to take it to the next level. Follow the trades. Follow the dis- they you know they they watch the YouTube <clears throat> videos to kind of understand how we're looking at things, trying to be probability based. If you're newer and you're still just hey, 2023 is gonna be a year to learn. All right, like, subscribe, follow, watch these videos, leave comments, ask questions in it. I don't mind redoing the videos because sometimes, as I tell people, the thing about trading, <clears throat> you never arrive until you're done trading. You're only as good as your last trade. What does that ultimately mean is that you are a student of the game because the game is always evolving. <laughs> Leadership changes, <clears throat> the market changes. You have to be willing to change. If you think you figured something out, The market's probably doing something different at some point. Just keep that in mind. All right, Bitcoin, let's get into it. Nothing. I I mean, I've got nothing to say. It's just dead money. It's in a downtrend, but the trend is trying to find a floor. Is this the floor? You don't know until it goes. At this point, I would just watch this area. If you're short it, which I probably not a lot of people shorting Bitcoin, that's the problem, right? You might have still excess long ownership. Does it have to get back into the 12 to 10 range? Maybe 10,000. Oil, <clears throat> we talked about this, the market holding up, oil holding up, not bearish for the market. I think the market is under this phase where it's going to rip into the new year, maybe the first two weeks, maybe even to OPEX, I don't know. <clears throat> Seasonality repeating patterns says that's likely possible based on repeating patterns. Now, is, are we in the depths of a bear market? <clears throat> it's more of a time, time bear market. It feels more like the 70s, 80s. Or the market just got really choppy in bigger ranges and inflation was entrenched. <clears throat> if that's the case, and then oil supply, we got to refill SPR. You can see it here. I mean, this looks strong. The market's going to like if oil's holding up. Not gas. I've, you know, we warn people, you know, you got to have stops. You got to understand. You got to, and again, give credit to the people who in the Discord room are like, hey, Sonny, dude, I don't trust natural gas. Well, you were right. Some of y'all who were warned, you were right. You know, again, we all have our ideas and thoughts on things, shortages, price caps, whatever. We we don't know. That's in the point being is you have to admit when you're wrong. I love to admit when I'm wrong and give people credit for when they're right. They're right about this. <clears throat> now you're at some levels on natural gas that have to hold. Just keep that in mind. These levels have to hold. These lower fives, upper fours. Like if they're not holding, you've got problems. <clears throat> the dollar. You're welcome. The only one who said the dollar was probably going to pull back after a monster run earlier in the year. I mean, literally from the bottom, what is it, bottom, the beginning of the year. Now you pull back. I mean, at this point, we called that we'd think the upper 27s, 28s. At this point, maybe you're coming back into some trends. Maybe you're coming back into this trend line around mid 27s. A lot of people want to go long the dollar. I mean, at this point, I don't really care about the dollar as long as it's stable. TLT, a little tricky here around the 100 level. Multi-day ranges, not sure what to think here. Again, the market and TLT, whatever, bonds have both had incredibly bad years. Does it base out at the end of the year? Kind of like the market kind of just chopping around before the seasonality. Is the market, if the economy is about to fall off a cliff, the TLT should be rising. Keep that in mind. TLT should be screaming higher. But also the TLT can go higher naturally if <clears throat> the feds are manipulating rates. And how they manipulate rates, I don't want to get into that. But point being is it just is what it is. Watch them. We don't 
I don't think the market's going to like if rates continue to go higher. And when I say higher, TLT back down to low 90s. Uh, the VIX, I mean, we've, we've warned folks. Hey, hey guys, hey gals, hey friends. 20 day, chopping. Feels very reminiscent of last December. You got a lot of choppy, sloppy action going into January <clears throat> at this point. This is not what people want to hear, right? They come here to say, like, you want super exciting, like, big dramatic ideas. Well, what if we're just in this chop zone before it spikes at some point in the first quarter? Now, keep in mind, if you have the Stock Traders Almanac, you followed the notes in the Discord room, what do you know? Here, actually, you know what? Let me pull it up. Spontaneous adjustment. So if you want to skip it, go right ahead. Let me see what I got in here. Because I know I have in the documents what to expect for the year. Is it in reference articles? Just give me two seconds. I apologize. Oh, no, 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 no. Education. Let's see if it's in here or not. It might not be. It's Anyway, it's a seasonality notes. I don't know why it's... Again, I don't look through this stuff very often. Other people should know where it's at. It's in here, and if not, <clears throat> I'll upload it. And But my point being is, and if you don't know this, so there's a seasonality to where the January effect comes in, new money comes in. There's a pullback, little hangover in January. There's another typical rally because of um, earnings in January that follows, leads into February. February, typically a pullback. And then there's a seasonal pullback every year. Every year. Like, here you go. Let me pull up the spy, and you'll see it. Typically, now again, this one started. This is a bear market. There's something usually in in March or April. Let's see if what we got here. Previous year, here you go. Here was a March pullback. Remember, and even in bull markets, this happens every year. March, February. Obviously, this one was COVID <laughs> pullback. <clears throat> do 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 do. I mean, that was a baby pullback in March. Again, every season, you know, every year is different. Here you go. 2018 was a little different, but you popped and then rallied and then failed into March. It happens a lot, y'all. I mean, it's just a seasonality of fun flows. Because also you have to remember, like, there's a hangover in spending in the economy after Christmas, right? And into January. So that's just the, the seasonality. But I won't get too much deeper into it, but... We don't know when it's going to start, but there's going to be some sort of pullback. And I think that pullback will probably be pretty aggressive. Because it might also be having to revolve around something the feds do. Again, we're talking in hypotheticals. We're probability-based traders. We don't believe anything is certain because the evidence is always evolving. So you have to evolve with the evidence. So let's, again, this is going to be a longer video for the new year, but just keep that in mind. Spy, bears are... You know, end of the world. The world is ending and the market's chopping. And this feels like more like an accumulation to rise to maybe then distribute later. Watch the levels. You got to hold this 375 to 380 range. If you get the rally, this is probably in the 390 to maybe this 400 range max near term. Or it could just be one of those things where it, it builds a base and chops to that high, which ultimately becomes the, the, like a fail point, a retest, a lower high. Could we get to 412, 415? Well, if that happens, I think we'd all agree that something news-wise would help pull that. I don't know what it's going to be. You don't know either. We'll see. Again, you always talk about the why is the why, the why. Sometimes the why does not present itself till after the fact, and then it's buy the rumor, sell the news. Just keep that in mind. QQQ talked about holding the 260 area. Got got there and then making higher highs and higher lows again tech has been absolutely ravished slammed 406 down to 268 do not be surprised if tech gets a dead cat rally into the new year i mean just don't be surprised iwm we talk about it lagging well now it's leading looks way better <clears throat> coming off the lows we talked about last november how the iwm peaked before the markets peaked in December. Could this be the high? Yeah, it could be. But doesn't mean you couldn't come back to like the 200 day market do this. Market do typical seasonal, seasonal rally, rally stuff. I mean, it's just people don't see the market for what it is. It's repeating patterns and tendencies. It's not 
just roll dice. There is calculated ways to like trade around it. It's just, it's not always the same. <laughs> uh, gold, no desire in shorting. I was really hoping for a bigger December pullback. This is looks leading. It's, it doesn't look weak, but here's the thing. You're into some resistance near term. I don't know if this is going to just pull higher like it typically can seasonality wise in the first quarter. So if there is a pullback in January, I will be looking for entries in gold. I mean, I just every year there's always a rally at some point from the December lows up. And if it's just this and then December, January pullback, you get a little bit maybe. These years are all, I mean, we've had a lot of crazy years the last couple of years. Here is your flat action in January rally. <clears throat> Again, just trying to show you all. Here's your little pullback. January rolled up into Feb, first quarter. Again, first quarter strength in, in gold every year, essentially. Here's your pullback. Here's your rally. You know, sorry, not your, that's your December. Now, and then it chopped and held up. We don't know. It's without with certainty but here again another january pullback then rally the odds say it does and if you go look at the seasonality in gold it's 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 there i don't know you can this this is part of you doing your job to know that what i'm saying is hey does he actually mean something that's does he know what he's talking about well double check don't trust anyone blindly do your own homework because that's how the problem is you get into a trade and you don't know something it, it, it's it, it you get weak you get mentally shaken or not understood or you don't know what's why right the why is helps you interpret what to do silver again this doesn't look bearish so be careful if you're shorting this stuff however I, the miners don't look really that strong but i'm not surprised holding the 20 day 200 day <clears throat> not anywhere back up near the highs do the miners lead the metals yeah typically they do gdxj same thing not really looking that great but again high and tight doesn't necessarily bearish so that's where be careful shorting. I'm, I'm again. I'm looking for dips to buy. AG. This is interesting because you would think AG, like Panama or sorry, First Majestic, would be up near in the mid tens. No, it's at the lows. Lagging. AEM lagging or not lagging. Sorry, leading, holding the twenty day. I mean, if the twenty day breaks, this probably rolls over. That's what I was watching earlier. Newmont. This thing's a piece of crap. I hate the, the legacy monster miners. They might pull the mine, like they pull the index, those ETFs down. Just keep that in mind. 20 day looks like it's about to crack. At worst, it's chopping. It's probably better trades out there at this point. Uh, pass, same thing. Passing on it, waiting. They've got now, keep in mind, AEM pass have a deal with Umana, if I remember correctly. <clears throat> when that, I don't know, remember the date when it plays out, but I'm going to let that come and go because the share count and everything, all the manipulation in that is just a monster headache sometimes. AM Diesel. We talked about it filling this gap down here, or this old gap. Remember, my gaps are pink. 61, 62, 63. Looks like it's holding. NVIDIA. A lot of people who shorted this. Congratulations. That was the blow off. Now you're into some areas where it looks like, if you just look to the left, it's probably going to hold. Again, oversold. You go from 190 down to 140. It's a huge move, y'all. Again, trader's market. SMH, same kind of thing been absolutely bamboozle smashed all year for the most part right goes from 320 down to 170s 160s now it's here at 200 it looks like it's trying to form a little bounce base 20 day maybe 220 again it's just one of those things it's like everybody's bearish and the market's holding up that's a problem right again everybody's bearish at the wrong times everyone's bullish at the wrong times you have to remember that put call ratio is going nuts like problematic for bull for bears adobe earnings pop pulls back chopping doesn't look bad apple apple of our eye needs to be we talked about this 126 125 area being support because once 130 broke we're like oh crap maybe the market could roll over well, look what it's done the last two days held up not ideal i mean think about for an apple holder who i mean january what was, what was the opening day price of 2022 uh, yeah, it was some up here. <laughs> yeah, somewhere up in the 180s. It closes at 120s. Not good. Not good. Man, fruit are going to be lagging. Fruit and all its compadres in the fruit aisle with tech. Amazon, same thing. Looks like crap, but due to probably rally back. Remember, people buy the laggards. There's there's this like wash sale thing. People, you know, 30 days. Not wash it. I mean, you know this, hopefully, for trading. 
30 days later, they're going to buy back what they sold. Well, keep in mind, like a lot of the capitulation, and we can just go look at tech. Sorry, just pulling up the QQQ for reference. A lot of the capitulation was in November and October. Remember, we talked about the fourth quarter can be very scary in selling. Well, here it was. Hey, what's up, Ken? So Amazon probably, probably again, if this stuff could just float higher naturally. And again, the market would rise. It just seems logical. CRM doesn't look terrible. Look at all this. The market's about to roll over. This is building a little base. And again, I don't know how big the moves are going to be, but base leads to rally, right? Base leads, it could be to this kind of rally. Base could be this kind of rally. Base can be this kind of rally. We don't know how big. Fill some gaps on Guggenheim. Doesn't look bad. We've talked about it. Meta, you know, the same thing that we're going to talk about with like Tesla. Once you blow off, remember the market is liquidity driven game. They cover their shorts. Obviously, smart money shorting way up in the 300 to 400, almost 400 range. Uses the liquidity, uses the news. Everybody's screaming, end of meta. And then look what happens. They're firing people. Ah, I gotta get out. Well, here you go. Now it's holding up. Probably 120s, 130s. I mean, it just seems likely. Uh, Microsoft, talked about the 235 area. Holding looks okay. Really wish we would have shorted this. Missed that. And again, you miss trades. Happens. Can't get, cry about spilled milk. Here you go. I think this probably bases and maybe we get another retest. NDAQ want to short this because we talk about the liquidity coming out of the NASDAQ and trading in other indexes. It just this doesn't look like it's about to roll over. Really praying for a rally back up to 65, maybe 70. Oh, that'd be fuck, freaking glorious. MicroStrategy, here you go. They'd go bigger on Bitcoin. News comes out, retest the lows from what was that? Uh, Man, May? It's a pretty easy reference. If you want to play the long, I get it. Netflix, we talked about this one, holding this like little blue box. Things that aren't bearish. I'm sorry, bears, if you're listening to this, especially my friend Solomon, who has lots of comments on YouTube, and I appreciate that you watching the video, my friend. This doesn't look bearish if this stuff's about to roll over. Good old Roblox. Hello, finally. We talk about bases and playing out. Think, come on. Come on, baby. We talked about this being like an exhaustion gap after what? Big dump earlier in the year. Somebody's accumulating down here. I'm just telling you, somebody is supporting the stock. Maybe this is a buyout target. Hopefully this can run. I don't know where it's going to go to, but I've got options. I got stock. The more you're up, the less you own. And trade around your position if you have to. Congratulations, by the way, to Tesla. We called the bottom. Now again, how many times do I call bottoms, tops, right? It's 50% of the time. Tops, bottoms are not easy. If you think you're going to be like this monster, like this master of picking bobs, tops and bottoms, no. But here's the thing about me picking the bottom. I didn't get as much as I wanted. I was hoping for multi-day range, maybe a retest. <clears throat> Either way, got enough. Happy about it. Said we get up to the 123s. Well, look what we're doing up here. We're consolidating. High and tight is not bearish. Look at this volume, y'all. I'm telling you, the capitulation. I feel like, just go look at meta, what played out. But this was a little more steeper. They had the gap down. There isn't, I wouldn't say, a little bit different circumstances. I, every chart's a little different. But either way, here's your bottom. If it pulls back, probably add some more if the market looks like it's safe. Am I a long-term bull? No, hell no. I, I'm just expecting maybe the 140s and can get, get lucky and maybe it pops even more. I don't know. Point being is if you followed this channel, we told you to absolutely sell, take your profits on this insane run-up. Well, if you bought on dips and you traded around it, great. And if you just took your profits and you said, Dan, I'll wait until you say buy it again. Well, guess what? We never said buy it again. Like other than for trading right here, you could have traded that and then shorting here. At this point, again, I don't trust stocks that have unlimited competition. Like there's nothing insulating tesla from other electric cars coming in and doing better and competing and putting them in a margin crunch that's all i can say the people that want to believe in that and hold it again i personally don't have a strong opinion on elon other than he's always won everywhere he went but he was selling stock at the highs he's been selling stock not buying it so if he's not buying it that's what you're waiting for if he believes in the company, he's going to go higher than he's going to put his money where his mouth is and stop believing the bullshit out there. And sorry to, for swearing YouTube, but it just gets so annoying that people are like, I'm a believer. Well, you sound like a religious zealot idiot. Believe in your stops, because if you did, you're thankful that you sold at some point versus riding this all the way into the dirt. 
And now we're going long and you're going, oh, I hope it goes back up higher. And it's like, well, you're the person that's stuck. And that is the reason why. And again, I sorry to ran us. There's a reason why the stock can't go back to highs because all these people who've been stuck are going to be overhead supply looking to unload on pops. Just the, what it is. Commodities. X holding up high and tight. Looks pretty good. Could probably get back up to the 28 range. Maybe. I don't know. Is this the start of the rip? We'll see. Keep in mind, this had a pretty solid rip in 2022 off the lose. We'll see. Commodities, that's what I'm banking. That's like my intuition says commodities, y'all. I mean, as much as you hate to hear that, prices are going to go up and sustain. Nucor, holding here. I mean, man, I need to put that back on the list. I bought some Mosaic on Friday. Saturday, Saturday. <laughs> like, what day is it? I'm like, hmm. This one looks pretty solid there, too, with a tight stop. Uh, Valet, I'm, <laughs> I've been saying I'm waiting for a pullback, but this is a whole high and tight. I mean, again, the pullbacks will be relative then. It's not probably going to go back to 11 or 12. We'll see. Unless the market turns over and pukes and the world ends, this, these names should probably make higher lows. Arrow, again, copper holding up high and tight. Doesn't look that bearish. CCJ, hopefully it gets some legs here. I don't know. I mean, I'm a uranium believer in a sense of as long as the price holds i believe <laughs> you've got a nice double bottom with the, i don't trust the westinghouse deal i still think you could get 16 to 18 if the market just absolutely unloads cf a lot of frustration in this i get it buying stock buying some longer dated calls tightening up in a massive massive zone here for the, the you can zoom out now again could it get down at 80 i guess so i've got an alarm there that would be like the extreme i am not going to wait for that hopefully if Hopefully Friday was the exhaustion selling, tightening up, <clears throat> oversold. I, I mean, we know this thing. Can it bottom slowly chop out? Yep. But remember, steep action in this name gets steep reactions. That's all I just am excited about, right? Because you get into chop points and then you get steep action that leads to steep action. This thing moves. Remember, it's lower vol volume, 30 million shares a day. It's pretty easy to knock the sucker around and move it 10, 15 points quick. I mean... Is it going to go back up to 110? I don't know. That would be sick. But, I mean, if you're trading this and you're buying stock down here and you have time, it's worth checking out. Mosaic, close at the high of the day. They guided. They had decent guidance. Let me pull up on the side screen. Let me exactly read to you what they said on Thursday, if I remember right. The company announced that the total push on seller now expected to be in the range. They, 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 for, they upped their guidance. Um... Not expecting the range, ton supporting. While the while demand recovery for both fossil fuels has been slowly slowed by seasonality in late 2022, Mosaic anticipates 2023 to be a stronger year for nutritional applications, applications supported by historically strong crop prices and restrictive growing economics from China. Okay, that was their exact statement. So, this was the reaction. So I was like, damn, this thing is. I mean, it looks like CF at their support, right? So it's. It, it, Again, if Mosaic is saying they're expecting this, and all these names, and you can go NTR, you mean pull up the moo. Here you go, NTR holding at 73. Let's put in, I'll put in the moo, because if you're not familiar, the moo is like the uh, ag ETF. Right? Let me see if I can get this. Uh, you can see some of this stuff coming in here. These lows seem like extremes, but these... This area in general, I would call an inflection zone, wouldn't you not? So we'll see. If it holds, great. If it doesn't, you can see it could go back lower. Hope that helps. AA Aaron started adding some back yesterday. <clears throat> we talked about taking profits on this nice up move. Still, this looks great. I mean, somebody set the floor here. I was really hoping, you know, because we talked about it. If you saw this at 41, like we talked about in December, mid-December, Hell yeah. Awesome. Because you, you bought this down here, which we did. And then you saw the retest. You go, Ooh! and then you saw that candle. You're like, hell yeah, we're going to go higher. Well, here you go. I mean, again, the bigger the green pull back. At some point, it probably will get back up into the 50s. That's all I can say. I mean, that's why I like commodities, right? It just seems very, very, very obvious. Financials. Here you go. I mean, if you, this is the thing. Again, Solomon, if you're listening, I'm talking to you because you're the one who, you're, I mean, I guess I talk about other people who are just trolling out sometimes and like super frustrated which you to me are a friend and you didn't know you act like an enemy i don't care 
here you go. Like the financials holding up. I try to explain to like who are bearish. I'm like, oh, this is not what you want to see if you're a bear. The financials making higher highs off the lows, getting to the gap, getting over the 200 day on the XLF. I've been talking about this every day. Like JP Morgan doesn't even give a shit. Right? Like the market looks tenuous and this thing's like, doot, 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 stepping up. Morgan Stanley, again, they announced some layoffs. They're clearly having a little more issues. 200 day seems to be holding. Seems to be holding XBI. I mean, here you go. Here's another thing. The market's about to roll over. Look at the XBI. It's not happening. I'm just just noticing things. Again, people say like, oh, you have beliefs. And it's like, man, I'm trying to be evidence-based. If you don't see the evidence, then maybe you're the one who has beliefs. Me, meaning you, like everybody else. Like, you gotta be thoughtful. You gotta just let it let it go. I'm just gonna look up something real quick. Um, UFPI, they're a lum big lumber name. Okay, yeah, holding high and tight. All right, and again, lumber, very important, right? All right, let's get into solar real quick because, again, I really wanted to short this at the highs, missed it. <sighs> Basing out. I mean, this tan doesn't really, it's kind of in a mid-range, don't know. ENPH, here you go. Touching this little gap area. I would watch this because if it holds here, it might have another, I mean, it could rip 30, 40 points. Sedge, holding up, flatlining here. Like the multitude of moving averages. First solar. Again, I don't know if Mr. Hoops is listening or paying attention. I told him to take profits on this. I was like, this is not a swing trade right here. Look what it did. It played games around the 140s, up mid 140s. Looks okay. I mean, again, for a bounce. Let's end it with oil and gas. Again, we like, I like oil. I like oil and dips. Like, that's not bearish action, y'all. Again, the market ain't rolling over if oil's holding up. It is what it is. Nat gas, a little different. Again, because for whatever reason, nat gas. And remember, UNG is a deteriorating ETF. It sucks. Right? It just is what it is. It's one of those ET, was it ETPs, if I remember right? Whatever. <sighs> but it's funny. It's like every day is green, but it's dropping. I, leave natural. I mean, again, well. If you want to trade natural gas, you know where the floor is and you just have to have set stops. It just seems a little crazy here because now it's actually getting... Now, again, if you go... We showed gas earlier. It's at support. UNG, how much lower can it go? That's the big question, right? XOP, ooh, really hoping for the 129s. Holding up. Looks okay. Exxon Mobil, right? The market's about to die, Dan. It's about to roll over. Why the hell is Exxon Mobil way off the lows rallying, right? Even PXD looks... Man, it's really open for 203. Looking pretty good. EQT, even this piece of crap. Maybe not. <laughs> Which is not surprised. They had derivatives lost, man. They couldn't trade uh, if you gave them the answers. Anyway, only have, it, <laughs> good luck. Like EX, EQT, call me if you need help trading your own natural gas features. Um, Oxy, holding up tight. I, again, all this stuff. It just doesn't look that bad. So... Let's get the new year started. Again, take some notes. Take some time to reflect on what your goals are going to be. I'm going to do that this weekend. Like, goals. Like, what do I want to expect? Now, again, people are like, oh, I need to make X amount of dollars. I'm telling you right now, if you've listened to Livermore Book, you don't, the market doesn't pay you a wage. You can't force the market to pay you. I want to make a million dollars this year. I have tattooed over my computer and essentially my forehead to look at every day. Dan, are you trading well? Because that's all you can do, right? Because there's no way of defining, again, if you want to pretend like you're an institution, you're like, I've got to make 25% a year. Yeah, yeah. No, there's years you're going to make more than that, and there's going to be years, hopefully, as you grow, that you can you might flatline, or you might have some mistakes, but you learn and you grow from it. The best thing you do is just trade well. And trade well means you followed your plans, you stuck to your disciplines, you don't chase, you have discipline, you do all these things that lead to success, right? And, and again, it's 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 always going to be the discipline because there's going to be times you have to admit you're wrong. Are you playing high probability trades? Are you over trading and gambling? Are you being stupid with options? Like all these things that you have to know what trading well and unwell isn't. And I'm telling you right now, it's no different than think of it like a diet, right? You eat well, you have a cheat day, something goes wrong, but overall, if you eat healthy, you will live a longer life, right? You will be successful in your health. But if you do all these things that are wrong and bad for your health, 
Well, again, they don't necessarily always lead to a problem immediately, but they accumulate and lead to a disaster later. That's the best way that I like to describe like your trading health. Are you trading well? Are you eating well? Are you doing exercising? All these things like they're all very similar. And the same thing with how trading works out. Like, are you being disciplined? Risk reward? Do you have a system, you know, that you stick to? So last but not least, especially 2023, if rates drop and you get a market dump sometime in the spring before housing market, you know, starts picking up typically because of move people moving seasonality. People don't want to rip their kids out of school. But when they do decide to move, they decide to move what? In the spring into the summer. If interest rates drop and all of a sudden a bunch of inventory pops on the market, I'm telling you right now, I'm shopping. You should be shopping. Let's talk about it. The goal is 10 properties, 10 years. Pay yourself passive income. Create your wealth. Pull money out of the market in risky, high-risk crap and find stuff that pays yourself and also appreciates. Now, people say, oh, I love dividend stocks. No, I don't like dividend stocks because there's, there's no tax advantages to dividend stocks. And the problem is, is that stocks are stocks. At some point, a lawsuit comes out against Procter & Gamble. Something happens to J&J. All these companies, things happen to. There's not, no guarantees. Now, again, it's nice to get paid that. Maybe sell some covered calls, play some of those different you know strategies within. But housing, the fundamental wealth of this country is built on housing because it always has been. The tax advantages are insane and 1031s, you don't have to pay capital gains tax. I mean, we could get into it. My goal is to help you guys get there. Please reach out. I'd love to help you find an agent anywhere in the country to help you with investing because you're going to get two agents for one if you do a deal and invite me in it because I'll be a referral. It's no different than you go to any of these websites, Zillow, Realtor.com. If they find you an agent, they take a small, they take 30%. I won't even take that because I don't want to be punitive. I take smaller than that. I usually do 20% of the commission from the buyer's agent. But you're going to have me there to help you advise you along the way as you make this first purchase. Because, again, the, it's it's like in anything, y'all. The first of anything is always the hardest. Because you're going into something trusting that you can figure it out versus knowing, right? And so the same thing, it's like telling my wife recently. You know, we, we bought this property in our neighborhood. And I'm using this Avail.co software. And she's like, wow, this is frustrating to use. I'm like, it's because we haven't used the software before for managing a rental. Oh, it's so fr I'm like, trust me, it's a better software. Everyone agrees who uses it when they compare it to other ones, right? But guess what? The first time in anything, it's always going to be a little new, a little bit of that frustration or just you just don't know, right? And so here's the thing about what I'll end it with with real estate is once you get one property, you figure out your systems, everything after that is just replaying it. And it's, it's just like trading, right? Like once you understand like these are the fundamentals that work for winning, and you do them over and over, you'll be fine. Now, people get scared in real estate because they hear all the horror stories, which I get it. The horror stories in trading, right? 95% of traders fail. Well, guess what? The key is obviously in investing in real estate, picking good tenants, picking good people, doing your homework. All these little things, I don't mind helping you out, sharing my systems, sharing my insights, because that's the goal. Like, as much as I love trading, the reason why I can help and do much because I am involved in real estate. My goal and my incomes make it so that I don't have to be a full-time trader or a full-time real estate agent. And again, but I love helping people with real estate because it's one of those things where, sorry to rant, but when you know you get a good deal, it's the buy and hold that everybody loves for like a Tesla or for like an Apple, if you find a good deal in real estate, it is no different than, hell yeah, in 10 years, this thing is going to be up 100, 200, 300%. I'm going to have collected X amount of capital. I'm going to have all these tax advantages. And then if I decide to sell it and I use a 1031, I'm going to pay no taxes on it and I'm going to roll it into more investment property. It's, it's exciting in its own different way. It's a little more passive, but it's like, it's, as they say, you know what your wins in real estate are at the purchase price. Like if you get a good deal and you know the demographics, you know the trends, it's no different than looking at your favorite stock that's in a 20, you know, a forever bull market on a dip. Because keep in mind, real estate prices over time always go higher. Why? Because people keep moving to the country or letting people in, whatever. People moving here because it's the best country in the damn world. So 
and again, we have a housing shortage. We built 28 to 25 million homes from 1970s to 2008. For the last essentially 12 years, we have built five to six million homes a year. And if people now can work remotely, I'm telling you right now, there are trends that you gotta get on. You gotta get on. I'm just, I, I again, some people email me about interest in this stuff. I look forward to helping you guys. Again, serving others brings what I would consult like wealth to you because not only are you helping yourself, I mean, maybe not yourself, not only are you helping others, but teaching. If you can teach something, it means you know something. It means it's a repeatable process. It means you are bringing value to expansive in the universe. Again, people know I'm not I'm not trying to be religious here at all, but like there are laws of physics. Like attracts like. So helping others is good for you. It helps you study, helps you be on top of your game, helps you with your own trading. That's why I love teaching this stuff and trading. Because it keeps me on top of it. Because if it's just me by myself and I have no one else other than myself to hold me accountable, that's why the Discord room helping us each other hold each other accountable telling you takes you to another level abundance abundance mindset love it all right happy new year you know where i'm at hit me up appreciate all the love support please like subscribe share and again if maybe someone who needs to hear this again this channel is never going to be big and it's meant to be for um everybody it's meant for the people who want to bust their ass and i always joke like tiger woods michael jordan tom brady probably could teach you how to do anything but will you actually execute probably not would i execute probably not it's only if you love trading, you love real estate, you love understanding what's going on. Because that's what this channel is built for. All right. Peace out. Talk to you later. Much love. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.